Thank you for being here, and with that, I'm going to start uh, taking some questions. How about a question from in here? Um, you, sir, with the mustache. Yes, go ahead. Uh, get the mic into him. Hello, Justin. Hello. <laughs> My name is Zach. I am 21 years old, and I'm here today to speak on behalf of the silent majority in this country. When you were running for the office of Prime Minister, your party said that Canada would run modest $10 billion deficits until the end of your term. Then the bu budget would become balanced. One year later, that is clearly no longer the case. In the most recent update of long-term economic and fiscal projections released by the Department of Finance, it is predicted that under your government, we will run deficits every year until 2055, and we will have an enormous $1.5 trillion in debt. $1.5 trillion. That is totally unacceptable. To give some people some perspective, in the final year of our previous government, that very same fiscal report projected we would have a $160 billion surplus by the year 2040. Justin, what are you doing to this country? You are intentionally setting up millions of young Canadians like myself for complete and utter failure. And what? And for what? To pander to your own moral superiority complex? If you care about young Canadians and the future of this country, you need to stop what you are doing right no, no, now. No, please, please. Hey, everyone, this is an open town hall, if you needed proof. Uh, and uh, we'll let Zach uh, finish his question, please. My question is this. What, if anything, are you going to do to curb your insane and reckless spending habits which are on the verge of being criminal to make sure that we do not end up being $1.5 trillion in debt as your government predicts? Okay. Thank you. Um, now, in the last election, um, three parties were uh, in significant contention for uh, earning the trust uh, to govern this country. Two of them made the decision that they were going to balance the books at all costs. Um, one party, my party, uh, took the decision, recognized that what this country needed was investment in our infrastructure, in the middle class. We needed to help people uh, get ahead because, quite frankly, under the previous government, we'd had the worst record on growth since R.B. Bennett in the depths of the Great Depression. We needed to face down the challenge that we're seeing all around the world right now of a middle class uh, that doesn't feel like success is within their grasp anymore. It doesn't feel that uh, the story of progress that has written the story of this country from one generation to the next uh, is actually working for them because uh, people aren't of the opinion that you know, their kids are automatically, even however hard they work, going to be able to have a better quality of life or more opportunities than they did. There are real anxieties and doubts out there. And we're seeing that not just in Canada but around the world uh, where uh, people are fearful and they're you know, leaning towards uh, closing in, closing off, pointing fingers, laying blame. And we took a chance in the last election. We said, you know what, we think Canadians are better than that and we're not going to play uh, the politics of fear and division. And we're going to be upfront with Canadians that what we think we need is investment. We need to invest in public transit. We need to invest in social infrastructure. We need to address, invest in green infrastructure. We need to invest in our universities and colleges and research institutions. We need to invest in our young people. We need to invest in the middle class and those working hard to join. And the first thing we did was we lowered taxes on the middle class and raised them on the wealthiest 1%. And I'm making a jump here, Zach, but I assume that the people you voted for, uh, the Conservatives voted against uh, that particular measure to raise taxes on the wealthiest 1% and lower them on the middle class. And then, this past summer, we brought in the Canada Child Benefit, which uh, helps 9 out of 10 families in this country with more money tax-free every month for the cost of groceries, school supplies, raising their kids. 
Uh, and the reason we can do that is we're giving more money to the people who need it, those in the middle class and those working hard to join it, by doing less for the wealthy families that receive the child benefit under the previous government. These are decisions we made because we know that giving opportunities to everyone to succeed, that supporting the middle class and those working hard to join it is the way we build the future. So when I talk to Canadians about being optimistic about our future, about investing in the kinds of things uh, that we know are going to lead to good jobs for our kids uh, and secure retirements uh, for ourselves and our parents, uh, that are going to lead to better investments in research and innovation that are going to lead uh, to solutions, uh, better health care, uh, better outcomes in education. These are the kinds of things that we talked about in the last election. And we, in the Liberal Party and the Government of Canada, have been consistent that our focus is in investing in ways to grow the middle class uh, and help Canadians move forward, and I stand by that.